Greetings, everyone. Seems like every week now there's two or three more things that you hear about from YouTube, from this agency, from that agency, that they're going to crack down on this and they're going to crack down on that. And as many of us know, they want to control our thoughts and to the extent that they don't think they can do that or doing that yet, they want to make certain things illegal and certain things called a terrorist act and just, you know, absolute insanity. Everything turned upside down. And uh, it made me wonder about the history of political correctness and it uh, I found this site which is looks to be pretty good called intellectualtakeout.org <clears throat> this article is from uh, 2016 I want to go through a little bit of it and then go to uh, uh, the uh, movie trailer um, in the November issue of Claremont Review of Books Angelo M. Codvilla wrote a deep dive article on the rise of political correctness in America because I was wondering myself, when did that start? Uh, you know, it wasn't just the the Bill Maher in the 90s. It was uh, goes back, the phrase politically correct is ubiquitous in America today. I complain about political correctness now and again, but I'd never given any thought to the phrase's origins. Codvilla, however, offers a fascinating look. The notion of political correctness came into use among communists in the 1930s as a semi-humorous reminder that the party's interest is to be treated as a reality that ranks above reality itself, writes Kovala, professor emeritus of international relations at Boston University. <clears throat> the semi-humorous reminder went something like this, comrade, your statement is factually incorrect. Yes, it is, but it is politically correct. The antidote was a vital reminder and Stalin's empire stray from the party's official position, and it could mean death. Whether or not something was true mattered less than whether or not it advanced the idea, the party's interest. How does this apply to America today? Codvilla says progressiveness, like the Marxists before them, have a simple raison de... Uh, anyway, what that word means is... Uh, Raisin de, uh, does it say how it's pronounced? No, I'm not really sure, but it uh, <clears throat> has to do with uh, reason or justification, <clears throat> excuse me, for existence. Because oftentimes we will try to apply logic to these things, like why, why are they doing this, why are they doing that, don't they realize Sandy Hook, blah, 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 well, of course they realize it. It's not that they don't have logic or have the facts. It's that, uh, well, let me just go to this quote. The formula is straightforward. The word is not as it should be because society's basic structural feature is ordered badly. For Marx and his followers, that feature is conflict over the means of production in present-day society. For Freudians, it's sexual maladjustment. For followers of Rousseau, it's social constraint. For positivists, it's the insufficient application of scientific method. For others, it is the oppression of one race by another. Once control of society passes exclusively into the hands of the proper set of progressives, each sex contradictions must appear <clears throat> as the basic structural problem is straightened out. Uh, I had little interest in the 2004 version of the Stepford Wives, I, I the only thing I know about it is that it made it, you know, made it into a comedy. But it was a, a very, uh, I believe, foretelling and uh, profound message uh, in 1975. Part of that could be that, being the age I was then, certain movies I, it uh, had a deeper impact, I guess maybe. But anyway, it was it was very good, and uh, I'd like to share this trailer. They're getting exactly what they always dreamed of, perfect wives. And the dream is becoming a nightmare for the Stepford wives. 
very modern suspense story from the author of Rosemary's Baby. The Stepford Wives about what men can do behind closed doors. Uh, they were telling me about the Men's Association. Right now, it's strictly men only. Not to mention that creepy Men's Association. We moved here about two months ago, and Ed joins this Men's Association. Any. I'm saying the Men's Association is a uh, metaphor for the system in this case. That gets him out of the house nights is fine with me. I like to watch women doing little domestic chores. You came to the right town. I want to please him now. I'll just die if I don't get this recipe. It took me so long to get the upstairs floor to shine. Charmaine's changed, Carol Van Zandt's changed, and so have all those other women's club members. I'm getting the hell out of Stepford. Bobby, it's gotten to you now. I just want to look like a woman. And you're not going to leave Stepford either, are you? Leave Stepford? Charmaine changed. Carol Van Zandt changed. She's changed! And stop telling me I'm crazy! You see somebody, you get some help, you, you see a psychiatrist. I think the men in the association are behind it. And my time is coming! Everybody's out looking for me, so don't panic. I want my children! Where are they? Charmaine changed. Bobby changed. And my time is coming. Columbia Pictures and Palomar Pictures present Catherine Ross and Paula Prentiss in The Stepford Wives. Oh, no. A very modern suspense story from the author of Rosemary's Baby, rated PG. All right, uh, continuing here, helping you, 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 you get the connection, uh, the Methodist of methods of the communist and progressive differ, but the goal is one and same, achieve cultural hegemony, a political phrase popularized by Antonio Gramsci, an Italian Marxist and politician who became prominent in progressive circles decades after his death. Progressives learn that achieving hegemony by criminal punishment is difficult. Intellectuals seeking to remake America, born tainted by Western civilization's original sins, racism, sexism, greed, genocide, etc., found a more effective way. Political correctness per perpetuated by a small class of people ensconced at universities, bureaucracies, and major media is the idea, ideal tool for achieving cultural hegemony. It is forceful seduction in lieu of rape. It achieves tacit collaboration by millions who bite their lip. As a political philosophy, political correctness might seem lifeless and aimless, but Kovla noted the goal of Lenin and Stalin was not a state built on Marxist principles. It was always party control. The two philosophy, philosophies are similarly empty. And I, I realize that at the same time, I can't help but decide more with the right on some of the things I hear about. <clears throat> uh, because the left and the liberalism of today is, uh, it is so weaponized and so, so satanic that you, you have to, uh, to lean to one side or the other. But yet at the end of the day, it's not either one of those that's you know, so much going to win as it is the the state that we, we find ourselves in or that they want us to be in mentally and, and physically and, and all of that. Uh, like its European kin, all that American progressivism offers is obedience to the ruling class enforced by political correctness, nor is there any end point to what is politically correct. Any more than there ever was to communism, <clears throat> here now as everywhere and always, it comes down to glorifying the party and humbling the rest. It's not exactly light reading, but Kodvla's article is a must-read for anyone serious about understanding the nature and origins of political correctness. I found it interesting that Kodvla made a point similar to one that Dr. Jordan Peterson made in an interview over the weekend. I know, I know, I know about Peterson, but he, he, he does have some... Uh, some well, really, everything I've ever seen that he wrote or said was pretty worthwhile. It's just that he, like anybody who, in a position like that, is is there to be a weapon. But he does 
say and, and believe, or as far as I know, he, I think he, he's, you know, some of the stuff is worthwhile in, in the midst of that. Uh, it's the idea that political correctness is a movement fundamentally, fundamentally political in nature and built on resentment. Peterson said this is no accident. It comes right of the Saul Alinsky playbook. The social justice people are always on the side of compassion and victims' rights, so objecting to anything they do makes you instantly a perpetrator. There's no place you can stand without being vilified, and that's why it keeps creeping forward. There's no compassion at all. There is resentment fundamentally. It's a simple point, but a very important one. Stop and think about it for a moment. How much of our politics today is driven by resentment?